7 Dreamchip Atom 1 Mini Zoom cameras controlled by a single RCP Pro. That's the project right now. I'll show you how to set all this up. So it's a little bit of a setup guidance, some tech inside tips and so on. This is the RCP Pro straight out of the box almost. I actually set the IP address already. So, um, but otherwise it's uh, basically clean. By the way, it's not on an online network. And by online, I mean the RCP itself cannot access the internet. My laptop here can, and that will turn out to be a crucial piece of information in a moment. The first thing we wanna do is to add a device. You can either add devices over here or you can do it right here. Okay, let's try this one. We'll add it manually, search Atom because it's Atom 1 Mini, oops, Atom 1 Mini, ah, Atom 1 Mini Zoom cameras. There we go, select this one. Now, um, the IP address is one that I know by heart because I have set up, this is one of the serial converters. Yeah, these are cameras which are not Ethernet enabled except when we connect them through a serial converter from Waveshare, which has this IP address for the first camera. The other cameras have other IP addresses, obviously, but um, let's just do this, this, this port, and I'm just save this for now. Now, the thing is, it's trying to install this device code, but it will fail because the um, RCP itself is not online. Now, to the rescue is, um, in a moment, it should kind of come up with the little blue link you saw a moment ago, and it will direct you over here where you can download the latest stable version of the device core as i've just done and then what you can do is go to the package tab you go to the upload button click to upload you select this one from your download section there we go and you confirm all right so the device core is now downloaded manually ah that was the link i was looking for but now um it is here so it is basically retry Okay, so it says disconnected. Maybe we need to add a little bit of information here, but actually I have a little software upgrade to do. Voila, here is my software upgrade. We have improved the UI for setting up the camera. We want to use TCP serial because we go over TCP to a serial converter. There are other options. You can go over WebSocket, WebSocket serial, UART, which is like a direct connection. You can even use the USB cable stream chip sometimes delivered with the cameras. So this is all in place. And we need to set the bus ID to number one if we're using a serial connection. See, all those wonderful small details are actually explained in the description text for each of these, which we also spend time on doing. So this is saved. It gets... Yeah, connected. Wonderful. So all I need to do is to do this for now another seven cameras, right? It's kind of easy. You just duplicate device, duplicate device, and duplicate device. Now, I don't get why our software is trying to connect <laughs> to <laughs> five simultaneous cameras. It's actually the same camera like seven times now, right? Same IP address. Say, oh, no, no, no. The device IDs are different. You see, the device IDs... Um, automatically increments here. Device ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 7. These are IDs we assign inside of Reactor, which makes the RCP able to change between these. Be because if you go to the RCP, which by the way we have right here, wonderful, it's uh, now shown in the simulator, kind of more convenient for our little demonstration. And if you um, hold down the shift key, you get access to the camera selector up here on the top. So as I'm pressing these buttons in the... Ah, Nah, I have only one camera assigned yet. Okay, let's just go back because um, I was duplicating them over here. What we need is to... Okay, so what is this? The devices that you have inside Reactor is like the pool of things you can connect to. But for any particular controller like the RCP Pro, you also need to point out from the device list, I want these devices on my RCP. That is because Reactor can actually have multiple RCP Pros. So to inform you guys about what I mean, let's just put in a, an additional RCP Pro, obviously unconnected. But essentially, one RCP Pro could actually like uh, be the, the, the host system of multiple. So if I select the second camera, it means that now one camera is on the one RCP, another camera is on the other RCP, but coming from the same pool of cameras. And that means one connection going out to the camera. By the way, Dreamship cameras can only handle a single master. There cannot be multiple devices talking to a Dreamchip camera unless they talk through a Skahoy device because our device core makes a single connection to the camera and then it allows us to share that connection between multiple panels. This is how we could actually have multiple RCPs talking to the same Dreamchip cameras. 
Wonderful Sky High technology. Now, um, but my point today, <laughs> that was a long detour. Uh, let's remove this one. Let's actually completely remove this little experimental panel. And then what I want to do is to do this. Uh, s pro tip, hold down your shift key. As I'm doing right now, click select, click select, 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 and another two times, select and select. And by doing that, thank you, please go away. Yes, we have added, batch added, uh, seven cameras to the RCP. Now let's go back to the simulator and see what happens. So now you can actually see as I am clicking on these buttons, I am selecting different cameras. They still look to be the same because the title in the display is the same. And that is just because they are currently not changed. Now, second step of configuration here is we enter into the camera selector. Inside the camera selector, it's all fine with the IDs. The camera names could be different. So maybe we'll just put in the number one after these number two. That will help us a little bit. Or, or since these are gamer cams, you could put in the name of your gamers for the eSport event that you are using them for. So you, uh, it's completely up to you. Yes, okay, so I've done that. It means as we now go back to the simulator, let's change over camera number one. It has the number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yes, all right, so that's great. Um, there was there's one thing that you need to add in addition here if you do so basically the camera selector is giving you ability to assign details to the configuration of each of the seven cameras remember we could mix and match cameras as you want these doesn't have to be dream chip cameras it could be mixing in pdc cameras uh, studio cameras what whatever it doesn't matter uh, this is why there are some configuration options essentially in this table form one thing we need to do is to assign how do you control the lens. In many cases, lenses are external devices. This is why we have a separate configuration for lenses. In this case, it's not external device. It is actually inside the DreamChip um, Atom 1 Mini Zoom camera. So all you need to do systematically is that you just do it on the first one and copy it down to all of them like that. Okay, tally forwarding, tally index, routing index, frame link window. It has everything to do with things we are not covering in this video. Hey, we could put in a color if we want. So, okay, let's just color the uh, camera selector a little bit. That's going to add a little nice touch to these. So, for whatever reason you want to color code your cameras, you can actually do that. Let's check it out in the simulator. You can see I have color coded the camera selector up here on the top so that we have these uh, three different cameras uh, colors assigned to, um, to the camera selector. Before we move on, we need to change the IP addresses of these cameras. So we'll just, I've prepared these converters already. So it's kind of easy. I just need to sequentialize these IP addresses. And there we go. So each of these would be an individual serial converter sitting before the camera converting Ethernet commands into serial commands the camera understands. So that is super great. Now let's check the RCP out. You see, we are, now we see something in the joystick which is essentially controlling the lens of the, uh, the camera. So that's just super awesome and great. Okay, guys. Um, I have connectivity. It was super easy to connect to these. Obviously, all these serial converters are like this one set up like this standard configuration for RS-485. No changes necessary out of the defaults there. It was um, added here. We have changed names. The final thing I want to cover in this one is how can we choose the strategy for the joystick? Because in the first video, I talked a little bit about how um, if you... No, wait, we need to go over here. By the way, the configurator is super cool, great, awesome, because it allows you to actually, you know, as you are clicking through these pages, you can customize which features you find on the display. You know, this nice display on the RCP Pro has... Um, a re it responds to the menu, and these knobs are then basically controlling the settings. You can see this is uh, completely reflected uh, reflected in the simulator. So whatever you see on the screen here is also what you get in, in um, on the actual RCP. So with this configuration UI from Reactor 2.0, it is like pages for Stream Deck, where you can essentially just click any of these and then assign actions over here. But th this is not the topic in this video. We'll just go back to the simulator for a while because we want to check out this 
discontinuity strategy that I was uh, talking about. Okay, so the way you access the camera selector is by holding down the shift key and then you press one of these up here. I will now hold down shift keys with my finger on the RCP and then I'll select the camera in the simulator. So be aware of that. Now, um, holding down shift and selecting camera number one. Now I move the joystick into position. So now the joystick is basically sitting right there. All right, so we select next, next camera. Um, this one, okay, so sorry, I just selected this one with my finger. So now we're on camera number two and I'll be adjusting the, um, the joystick of the uh, RCP like that, all right? So I now go back to the first camera and notice what happens inside. Ah, this is not the best example. I'll just move the joystick in position like you can see right here, okay? Um, and then I go back to this camera. So now we have camera one, camera two, and camera two is at 9.9, .9, um, but the position of the joystick is pretty far up, as you can see. So the discontinuity strategy means that as I'm pulling the joystick, you can see it's picking up from where it is, even though it is like very close to the top, but it's bridging the gap to the very top linearly from the position it is at. So you don't get any jumps. Now, there are other strategies you can apply, and this is now going to be technical, okay? So um, sh close your eyes, stop the video if you dislike what you're starting to see now, but may you may find it interesting if you're a geek. So um, basically, this is the configuration tree um, of the RCP. If I dive into this tree, I'll find this iris black control layers and there's basically a layer for each of the cameras so the first camera we are on no wait actually the configuration file is shared between all of them because they are all dream chip cameras they are using the same config so this file used everywhere means that if i change the behavior for the iris joystick by clicking this guy and then over here i'll just show more and then i'll show jason because i Ah, <sighs> is that a good idea? No, maybe I'll just use the event handler because the double linear discontinuity strategy you see right here could be changed to offset. But if I change that to offset here, you also find that it is changed for this one up here because uh, they are sharing the same file. So there's like a file in the system. I'm changing that file, but it is used on all seven cameras, which is great in this case, right? Since we want to change it for all seven. Now I have the offset discontinuity strategy. So let's see what that means. <clears throat> okay, um, we will put the joystick in position like this, and then we will hold down the shift key. I'll go back to the simulator real quick, sorry about it. Uh, okay, hold down the shift key and select this camera, and then I'll put it in position up here. And then I go back, holding down shift to this camera. And notice we are in this position. So as I'm pulling it, it's picking up from the place it is at. But notice what happens. I'm pretty close to the top, right? If I push all the way to the top, it doesn't go any further than this one. Why? Because we kind of off offset the whole range. So now if I'm pulling it back again, you'll notice that as we are closing somehow, you know, around here, like midway, we are at F16. And now all the way to the bottom, it's just, it's not changing. We just offset the range. Now, if I go to the top, it will actually go back to, you know, close to 1.9 or whatever it is. Okay, so it's only when I get all the way to the bottom that I actually have the full range reset for controlling the iris of the camera. All right, so that was the offset strategy. I don't know if it's useful, but at least it means that the distance from where the joystick is to the top to the bottom is going to be similar sized steps. So we also have a strategy which is not even inside the configuration UI just yet. It will probably be soon, but it is described in it. So let's just open this one up. And if you hold, nah, this guy, if you hold the mouse over this one, you see that there's a mode called catch up. Okay. Now it's not in the drop down yet. So we'll just go into the JSON and then we'll add it in here. I'll just type catch up like this. Nice. All right. So let's try this one out. Go back to the simulator and hold down shift key, select camera number one, and I'll put the joystick in position. So I put the joystick in position here and then I will 
just hold down and change to this camera and release again okay so and then we go to this position all right and then i hold down the shift key and go to the first camera now let's see what catch up means it actually means that nothing is happening before i at one point reach 2.5 so it needs to catch up to that value you see i will now hold down the shift key and change over to this one yes all right so 10.6 same thing nothing happens here until i get to the point where it hits 10.6 again so that's it's catching up to the previous value before it's going to change anything and then of course it has the the full range at its uh, disposal so that's what the catch-up mode is so these are things you can do in configuration of the rcp pro when you want to choose a strategy for how a fixed position joystick should be um, maneuvering between um, multiple cameras that would have different iris settings thanks for watching this video i hope you found it useful subscribe to our youtube channel follow us on social media our newsletter whatever i love doing these videos and tell you about skyhoy tech and awesome cameras from the industry it's such an exciting business we're in isn't it so thanks for um, following along and uh, see you in another video.